everybody. This is Jen from Garn Jen's Journey. It is a cool one here in Central Michigan, Zone 5B. I haven't done a video in a long time. I've been very busy and when I haven't been busy, the weather hasn't cooperated. So today I'm going to take you on a walk through the garden and show you what's going on. Um, the garden season is about over for a lot of crops but there's still some crops that are going into the ground yet uh, that still have a couple more months of growing time left before they're done for the year. So let's go take a walk in the garden today. So this is my container bed area where all my container beds are. Um, and I have some things that are done, some things that have just been planted. Um, and uh, it's just an interesting uh, garden area here. So over here in the first one is some beans. These are calypso beans. They, they are a dried type of bean. Uh, didn't get the best harvest from this year. Um, they didn't do very well. But I have enough uh, bean pods there that I can actually uh, save to plant next year for um, a better harvest. So that's pretty cool. In this one here, I transplanted some of my asparagus. This will be the bed that they grow in from now on. Um, and I'll probably plant some more asparagus over here. Um, once I pull all these plants out, this is um, carrots and celery. So I'm going to be pulling them out pretty soon. And then, like I said, I'll probably put more asparagus um, perhaps over here. And then um, my asparagus will be up off the ground and easier to uh, see and know where they are. We have some more carrots and then this is some stevia. It's doing very well. It's about time for me to start harvesting that and preserving it. And then I'm actually going to be trying to put this in a container and take it inside to overwinter it. Um, my house is pretty small and the windows are very limited. So I'll probably be keeping this in our bathroom with a grow light over top of it because our bathroom stays uh, quite warm and somewhat humid in there just from doing laundry and taking showers and things like that. So it'll be a good environment for that to stay in over the winter. Some more Swiss chard that we've got going on and then some more carrots here. <clears throat> Some of the newest crops that we got going in um, that should be good to go before the frost really hits. We've got some lettuce and some beets going on in here. That tomato plant right there is the big rainbow tomato plant. Uh, beautiful tomatoes on it. Um, I grew it over here last year and it's in a pot. I don't know if you can see the pot right there. Uh, it's in a pot. And last year, um, when everything died off for the season, I just left it alone. I didn't even clean it up. I was done. <laughs> so um, the tomatoes that were on it actually uh, rotted right in the pot and stuff. And so this is a volunteer plant that grew out of last year's harvest. And it did amazing this year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a huge plant. I've trimmed it a couple times, but then after a, a couple times I just let it go and so it's taking up this whole area. And for a volunteer tomato plant that came up in almost July, um, this plant has done wonderful. These are my Mongolian giant sunflowers. Um, they didn't get as tall as they did last year. Last year they were way above that post. At least the one was. I had one that was huge. It was above that post. It was about 14, 15 foot tall, something like that. Um, this year they didn't get as big because uh, the weather's been really crazy. But um, overall I'm still pretty pleased. They got a good size. Um, hopefully this year they will be fertile where I can actually save the seeds. Last year, because there wasn't enough pollinators and I didn't have enough plants here, they didn't pollinate and so the seeds were all duds, which was a bummer because I had to order more seeds. And with these guys, when you order seeds, you don't get a lot. So, as yeah. <laughs> so we'll see if the seed heads are fertile this year, if I get enough to uh, grow quite a few of them next year. There's some more of my containers in my container bed area along the walkway here. Um, 
they got roselle going on and when I planted these I did not realize that the roselle gets really 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 big um, so <laughs> it's doing pretty good for being in a pot so I'm thankful for that and then right next to it's a goji berry um, so it's doing pretty good in a pot um, and we'll see how it does next year hopefully um, since it's going really good um, really good well established plant next year I should actually get some berries from it so really excited about that then next door to it we have parsley and then we've got uh, tarragon and this is uh, indigo it's the only plant that survived after being winter sown um, our springs were just really hectic so this is the only plant out of I think five seedlings that actually survived um, I don't know if I'm going to get anything from it this year because winter's coming <laughs> so we'll see and then right next to that is um, my lemongrass and then on the back side here of this area, this is where I grow um, a lot of my beans or I'll grow squash. Uh, this area is actually my dog pen. You can see it's a nice sized dog pen. It used to be a chicken coop, a uh, chicken run back in the day. And then when we moved the chickens out back, we converted this into the dog pen. So the do girls can be out here and they have plenty of room to uh, exercise and stuff when they're left here all day um, but anyways I use the fence part to grow a lot of vertical things and so on this side this year I have the crimp Christmas lima bean and um, I'm just amazed at how big these things get as far as the vines um, the vines some of them are a good 16 foot long they've already gone up the fence which is 12 foot tall at the top of the board there and then come back down um, so they're a good 16 foot long on vines and then the pods themselves let's see if I can zoom in for you here without going blurry the pods themselves are pretty huge. There's one right there. Let's see if I can see some other ones here on the camera. It goes really blurry when I try to zoom in. But anyways, the pods get really large too uh, for the lima beans. So we already picked a couple yesterday because I have some down on this area that are starting to dry out and be ready to go. Uh, but this should be a very plentiful harvest. My rose bed area is doing really, really good. I had some help. I have somebody who comes and helps me uh, twice a week with a garden and, and some things to, just to get it where it's uh, looking nice. We got the mulch down. Um, so yeah, it's starting to look really, really nice around here. Very thankful for her help. But uh, the roses are starting to do pretty good. This poor rose, I don't know what's going on with it. It had died in the spring and we thought it was completely dead but we left it alone and then it came back and it grew like that and last month and now it's dead again so I don't know if my cats are peeing on it or what but uh, it's like man <laughs> but the other roses are doing pretty good in here and um, my chamomile is about done um, that's what I've got planted along here is chamomile so that's about done on this side of the dog run I have pumpkin that's a pie pumpkin and I have one pumpkin but it's a nice size pumpkin so I can't complain my medicinal beds looking pretty good um, still have a lot of green some of it's starting to die back but I uh, still got a lot of green got beautiful pink cocks come there I'm gonna put another plant there next year I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna put there I'm not sure just yet but anyways the beautiful pink cocks comb and then lemon balm I did have catnip in there, but now that I have one planted in a different garden area, uh, that one's going to go to the chickens. Then I got valerian, <clears throat> yarrows in the back, um, got some weeds. <laughs> um, and then we have coneflower and chives, lemon thyme, whorehound, some more coneflower, and some hyssop, and uh, some bee balm back there. So it's doing really good this year. I am very, very thankful for that. This is one of my bean tunnels. Um, I grow a lot of things on cattle panel trellises. Um, as much as I can grow up, uh, that way it's off the ground and it gives me space on the ground to plant things that don't grow vertical like 
uh, cabbage and um, bush beans, carrots, uh, beets, things that can't grow up. I uh, get to have all that space for them because I grow a lot of vertical uh, products, a lot of vertical pole beans and peas, um, my squash and stuff, instead of having it grow on the ground, I grow up a trellis. <clears throat> so it works very well for me. Um, cattle panels are great. Um, they can be a little bit pricey when you first get going, but they're a worthwhile investment and they last a long time. So it took us four years to get as many as we have now, and next year I'm going to be getting a couple more. So every year we add to the garden um, to get more space. So on this side, um, I have um, Mother Stellard beans. They're a dry bean and they're starting to dry out. Um, so they're going good. Um, they're about done. Um, so I'm just waiting for them to start drying out. <clears throat> and then I have uh, lots of borage. I'm gonna continue to grow borage. Uh, I did have tansy, but I uh, took that out this year because it, it started getting out of control. And so I finally took that out of the ground, and we're just going to start growing borage from now on. Um, the pollinators really like borage, and it's a lot easier to control um, than the tansy. <clears throat> on this side, I have cucamelon. I have lots of cucamelon. Uh, they're also known as the Mexican sour gherkin. So cute little things. This was the first time that I grew them, and uh, see about the size of it right there. They're they're kind of tiny, but they're a perfect little pop in the mouth snack. They're really nice. <clears throat> and then on this side, I had uh, watermelon. The watermelon's done, uh, so I'll be pulling that out. But I also put some of my extra tomatoes along there. Um, those are mortgage lifter tomatoes. Uh, there's nothing on them right now as far as anything to see because I harvested some of them last night. But uh, the most exciting thing in this area is right what's up above us. What else is growing on this arbor? Uh, this is where I put my loofah this year. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's doing very well. So let me show you my loofah. And aren't those awesome? Those are uh, doing really, really well. That one back there is the size of my arm, um, my forearm there, from the tips of my fingers to my elbow. That one's that large. And um, they're doing very, very well. Uh, last, last week or so, that one back there was basically the size of this one here, which is about half of my arm. But we had a good amount of rain come through finally after being in a drought. And so after that rain came through, all these guys just really grew a lot. So I'm hoping that they'll mature in time, uh, that I'll be able to preserve them. Um, I'm not sure about these guys right here up front. These ones, these two anyway, might not mature in time. They might end up rotting, so they'll go to the chickens. But the bigger ones, um, I have like three large ones. Uh, they might have time to, to fully uh, mature where uh, I can take them inside to dry them out and use them as a loofah sponge. So very excited. That's uh, the most exciting plant I think in my garden this year is the fact that we actually got good decent sized loofahs growing. So this area here, this is where my tansy used to be. Like I said, we just dug it out of the ground um, because it was becoming a problem and we wanted to make sure that we nipped that problem in the bud before it got worse. So, um, like I said, we decided that with the borage and this borage right here, all of this self-seeded from last year. But the borage is a lot easier to maintain and um, pull out where you don't want it than the tansy can be. The tansy can spread for a long time depending on the wind. Um, and so we didn't want that. But the borage, because it, the seed pods are closer to the ground, um, they kind of stay on the ground there. They're a lot easier to maintain as far as um, them being invasive or not. <clears throat> so yeah, so the tansy's gone now. Right next to the tansy, this bed was supposed to be an awesome, spectacular bed. Um, but I'm a little sad to say that it, it wasn't as spectacular as it was supposed to be. Uh, this plant here, <clears throat> this is the Hungarian 
giant or Hungarian Hungarian heart tomato. <clears throat> and let's see, I know that there's a tomato left on here because I haven't harvested it yet. <clears throat> but this is the tomato, and this is actually a small one. I mean, let's see, you can kind of see the size. This is actually a little bit smaller than some of the other ones I got off there. But um, <clears throat> this plant was loaded with with those uh, tomatoes. Very well producing plant. I was really excited. But the rest of the bed, and you can probably see it here, the rest of these tomato plants uh, here were all supposed to be Hungarian hearts. And as you can see, they are not. They are yellow pear tomatoes. So I was really, really bummed. Um, I ended up buying quite a few uh, bushels of tomatoes this year to can since my Hungarian heart bed is not what it was supposed to be. Some of my flower areas and, and my garden are doing really well. Uh, these are hollyhocks here and then I have some coxcomb on the back side. This is hollyhock here too but for some reason it did not put up a flower flower stock. So I'm kind of bummed because this one's supposed to be a black one and I would have really liked to see what it looked like. But uh, we'll try again next year I guess. <clears throat> And then this uh, trellis here was where I had my Trifano Violetto pole beans. And uh, they're drying out. It's almost time to harvest them. Not quite. Some of them are still still too um, damp to, to harvest. So I'll probably harvest them next week. But uh, yeah, so I had those grown on that side. Then on this side, I had the Japanese cucumber. Really like that cucumber, so I'm definitely going to be growing it again next year. And we also had some San Marzano tomatoes uh, that were gifted to me that I grew over here to try them out if I liked them or not. Um, they're okay. A bit tiny for my taste as far as uh, getting bang for your buck for garden space. Um, but they're a decent tomato. I don't mind them at all. Um, but yeah, I'll probably be going on something different next year instead of these guys just because again size wise They're kind of small for uh, for what I need in my garden space This trellis arbor is where I grow my peas every spring and then once the peas uh, are done we put some other uh, crops in the ground uh, to take up that space and then um, in the fall, this is the first time doing it this year, we'll see if I had enough time to do it. Um, I planted more peas to get going. Um, so I also had planted the extra seedlings I had from the cucumber melon, so those are there. And my honeydew melon is right there that I planted. And I'll show you uh, some of the melons that I have that are growing when we get on the other side. On this side of the uh, trellis, um, I grew Swiss chard and some beets, and I can't remember what else, um, in the summer. And then once those were done, we pulled all those out and we planted our fall crops. I have a uh, bok choy growing right here, and um, I got some savory. And since the honeydew melon was taking up some room by sprawling out, I figured I'd just let it go there and I'll plant my lettuces in a different bed. But you can kind of see the melons I got. Got one baby over here, it's kind of weird looking. <laughs> but I'll uh, take you over here. So these are some beautiful melons right here. I have never grown honeydew before, so these are our first. I'll probably harvest these uh, to have for this afternoon. This is where I put my yellow bush beans. Since uh, yellow beans are a bush bean, um, there is a variety that I saw that's uh, a pole bean, but I think it's more like a, a broad bean and not quite a, a slender uh, green type bean. Um, but anyways, this is where I put those guys, the yellow bush beans, and they're mixed in with wild plantain. Uh, plantain is a very good plant for medicinal purposes. It's great for your skin, especially if you get stung by a bee or a mosquito or burns. Um, so uh, since I had some wild plantain just pop up in the garden, I let it go because um, 
I use it. So it's a weed uh, that a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people say it's a weed. We'll put it that way. Um, but it is definitely welcome in my garden space. The same with this plant here. Um, this is wild. Uh, the Lord planted it here. This is mullein. And I've harvested quite a few of the leaves already. That's why it's a little bare. Um, but this is the mullein plant. And it, too, is very good for medicinal purposes. It's great for uh, respiratory conditions. So I let this guy grow. And um, I'm letting it, the flower head uh, grow so I can hopefully collect some seeds and actually grow some more mullein uh, next year um, as well. This is another uh, area where I have lots of flowers going. I put, planted lots of flowers this year. I was going to do cut flowers at the farmer's market, but also the flowers help bring in the pollinators and the beneficial insects that keep down the bad insects. So I have almost as many flowers in here as I do vegetables. And that actually proved this year to be a, a blessing. It really, really did. Um, so if you're struggling with pollination or, or predatory bugs or things like that, I would highly recommend that you give up some of your ground space for putting in flowers. Um, you know, they add a beauty to the garden that just regular vegetables can't do by themselves, but they also are a great benefit to have in your garden um, instead of just by themselves in a, in a special little dedicated flower bed. Make them a part of your garden. In this area tucked under the flowers, these are zinnias right here. Right underneath them, it's kind of hard to see, um, are my peanuts. And uh, they're doing pretty good. This is a peanut plant down here, kind of tucked under the zinnia. So they're doing pretty good. Uh, we'll see if I get a nice harvest. Um, I didn't plant a lot of plants. I only got six plants in the ground this year because uh, that's all the seeds that I had. But um, I'm hoping that uh, they'll have produced enough uh, peanuts where I can uh, grow quite a few next year. And sometimes that's the way it goes. Sometimes you only get a few seeds. So the first year you plant those few seeds that you have and the crop that you get, you save so you have the seeds to plant the further the next year. Instead of consuming the crop, you, uh, you just use it for seed saving. So that's what I'm doing with the peanuts this year. And then they're growing next to the trellis that is for my Kentucky Wonder pole beans. And uh, they're about done too. I, I just cut all the vines uh, yesterday. Um, so they can stop getting the water and all that stuff and they just can start drying out. So a lot of Kentucky Wonder uh, beans here. And then this bed is where I'm going to plant the rest of my lettuce uh, that I've got going um, and some mustard. Um, but I was really excited because this year another weed popped up, at least what people would call weeds. Um, this right here and right next to the marigold, that's purslane. And purslane has never grown in my yard. So the fact that it popped up this year, I was so excited. Purslane is an edible. Uh, it's a wild edible. And I'll have to look it up. I haven't spent time researching, but I think it also has some medicinal properties as well. So that was definitely a welcome addition to the garden. My sunflowers are starting to die off. Um, but there's still a lot of beautiful blooms on them. So one of the things that died off and you don't see is uh, dill. Uh, we finally cut down most of the dill stalks because they were dead. But in the one bed that I had over by my Japanese cucumbers, it was mostly all dill. Look at this bad girl. This is called flying the coop. That's where that phrase comes from, because chickens do fly. Okay, so this is the last bed in my garden. This is um, my other tomato bed. This is for slicing and, um, oh, cherry tomatoes. My brain's running short today. But anyways, so this is for my slicers and my cherry tomatoes. I try to keep my tomatoes grouped by what I would use them for. So when it's time to harvest, I know right where to go. So um, here in the slicing bed, 
I planted Cherokee Purple, Black Crim, and Mortgage Lifter. And I also have some uh, Blueberry Cherry Tomatoes. Um, out of everything that grew here, Mortgage Lifter hands down was the best uh, producing plant in this bed. This plant right here with all these beautiful tomatoes that are on it, that's my mortgage lifter. Um, the rest really did very pitiful um, for, for this area. So I'm not sure what happened, why they did so crappy. Um, I have one Cherokee purple that's starting to ripen there. And then my black creme down here uh, has one tomato there. But yeah, um, I did get some black spot fungus, and we took care of that with a copper fungicide. Did really well, and then we got some more rain, so now the blight's coming in. Um, but we're not going to worry about it because the season's almost over anyway. But um, was really, really happy with the mortgage lifter. Definitely growing again next year. The same with the uh, blueberry cherry. Um, those are really, really good. Um, highly recommend those. I will be growing them again next year. Last, not least, are my peppers. The peppers I grow in the greenhouse because peppers tend to like it hot. And so the only way um, that I can guarantee I'll get some peppers um, is to grow them in my greenhouse where it stays pretty hot uh, where it's located for them during the summer. So I have two jalapenos and then this is an Avarsky pepper, which is a roasting pepper. And I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I have nice size peppers going on there. So they actually get a lot bigger, um, you know, uh, but for the first time growing them, I'm excited. So that is the garden. Thank you so much for walking with me through my garden this morning. Um, I hope you were able to get some inspiration on maybe what to do with your garden next year. Um, the garden season's almost over, but at the same time, there's still quite a few crops that we can grow in just a, a month or so. Radishes are a good one. They're usually about 30 to 45 day uh, turnaround time. So if you get them in the ground soon enough, you'll definitely have a fall harvest. But anyways, that's how my garden's going right now. And I just thank you again for watching me and my journey. And I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.